Hey, what's up guys? Melvin Funk here and today I'm going to be ranking all the main IB subjects in terms of difficulty and I'll also be explaining how useful they are for university and your future. So the tier list goes from here. Easiest at the bottom and hardest at the top. Easiest is sevens without studying. Then there's sevens with a little bit of studying. And then there is heavy content subject, but still easy sevens. And then there is heavy content subject, easy sevens, but you still need to study a lot. And then afterwards, there's a subject which... Um, even if you prepare a lot, you still need a little bit of talent in order to get that seven. So maybe you do a lot of past papers, you practice a lot. However, you're not guaranteed that seven because you still need a little bit of skill and talent. So hard work alone will not get you there. And there is the last one, the highest difficulty where you need high level tutoring in order to guarantee a seven in that subject. No matter how qualified your current tutor is, if he or she did not personally get a seven in the subject, no matter if they went to Harvard or Oxford, you will not get a seven despite their tutoring. So I personally did Math A HL, Econ HL, Computer Science HL, Geography SL, Chinese B SL, and English A Lang and Lit SL. So firstly, we have Business Management. Business Management does have content, but I'd say it's basically sevens with a bit of study. It is basically a common sense subject. However, Business Management isn't a useful subject because most universities don't require this and they don't really see this as at the same level as Math HL or CS HL or Physics HL. So it is a low tier difficulty and low tier usefulness. Okay. We have Sports Science next. Sports Science is basically freaking PE, okay? There is a bit of theory like bio, but it's not as heavy as bio, so I, I can't put it in heavy content. So I'm still gonna put it at sevens with a bit of study, okay? Now I am gonna put it above BM because there is a bit of science involved, so you can't really BS it as much as business management. In terms of usefulness, it is not as useful as bio. Unless you wanna go into kinesiology, sports science is pretty much useless. A lot of students see it as a subject that only stupid students take. I would say in terms of usefulness and difficulty, it's pretty low as well. Next up, we have Econ. So I took Econ. I'd say it is a heavy content, but it's still easy sevens, but you still need to study a lot because there's a 10 marker and 15 marker essay writing, which you need to drill in order to get a high mark for. And there's also a lot of content for micro, macro, and global econ. So it is a very heavy content subject, but with lots of studying and preparation and also a bit of guidance, sevens are basically guaranteed. So it is a very easy subject and also it's actually quite useful as well because if you're trying to get into econ or a business major in the university and you have econ to write about, then it is also very useful for universities. They value econ much higher than they value business management, okay? So next up, we have physics. So for physics, I've heard that it's actually really hard. There's a lot of equations and content that you need to do. But in terms of difficulty, it's actually quite up there. Uh, in terms of usefulness, physics is actually top tier because if you're trying to get into engineering, a lot of engineering degrees require physics. Physics major, then a physics background obviously will help. So, so it's a top tier subject. Okay, next up, we have computer science. It is a very tough subject. There's a lot of content, definitions, explanations, concepts, theories, and algorithms to memorize and personally speaking on the exam you have to write really fast or else it's really easy to run out of time without finishing all the questions and also unlike econ it is not guaranteed that you get a seven so for cs it's not an easy seven because on the exam you are really tight on time for even for me when i was taking the exam i didn't feel like I was able to guarantee a seven before walking in, unlike my other subjects like econ and geo. So I'm gonna have to put it at need count. You do need a lot of skill when writing the code and algorithms, but on the concept end, if you memorize content, then you can get the definitions and explanations all correct and completing it in time. So I'm gonna put it in need talent. In terms of usefulness for CS, it is pretty high up as well, especially if you're trying to get into a computer science major, you're able to write a lot about it on your personal statement. And especially for IBCS, you will learn a lot of algorithms that will be taught and used in university. You'll basically be ahead of your class in the first two years of university by taking IBCS in high school. That's also a really top tier subject, but it is also not guaranteed that you get a seven, even with a lot of studying for CS. Next up, we have global politics. So global politics is a content heavy subject. However, unlike CS or physics, like equations, um, you can bullshit your way through it. So for most essay writing, especially for humanities, you can basically bullshit your way through it if you explain properly. For global politics, the only usefulness that it has is that if you're going into political major, other than that, it's set at the orange tier over here. Now, visual arts, it really depends on your artistic skills as well as your bullshitting skills. If you're not an arts person, it's gonna be really hard. But if you're an arts person, it's gonna be really easy. So for arts, I would actually, I would still put it at sevens with a bit of studying. Even if you're good artistically, if your essay writing skills is horrible, you're not gonna get that seven. So you still need to, you know, be able to write some essays and stuff. So I'll put it at yellow. 
Next up, we have chemistry. I'm going to put chemistry on the same tier as physics. In terms of usefulness and difficulty, it is exactly the same as physics. I'm going to do the same for bio as well. Biology, same tier as chemistry, physics, bio. Next up, we have geography. So geography is a very content heavy subject. You have to memorize a lot of definitions, explanations, and theories, just like econ. Unlike econ, where you have to draw diagrams, geography, you can explain with a lot of common sense. So I would put it at heavy content, but easy sentence. You do have to study a lot. Actually, because you have to study a lot, for the definitions and explanations, I will put it on the same tier as econ, but it is not as hard as econ because on the test, you can BS your way through the essay writing. However, you do need to use your definitions and explanations as well as case studies to back up your, your bullshitting explanations. It's not as useful as econ, but for me personally, it was my favorite subject. It was really fun taking geo. So I, I'm going to leave it at this. Usefulness is not as high as econ. Difficulty is also not as high as econ, but it's not easy sevens without studying, right? You do need to study a lot for geo because there's a lot of things to memorize. Um, out of my six subjects, econ and geo was the subjects where I memorized the most. Okay. I spent two to three months memorizing for econ and geo. So it is a very content heavy subject, but in terms of getting the sevens on the exam, it is much easier than the subjects that are above these. Next up, we have English B. So if you know English, right, if you're good at English, it is really easy. But if you just started learning English, then it can be really hard. But most of the case, English B is down here. In terms of usefulness, it is actually not useful at all. Um, if you're trying to get into a university in, let's say, the UK, the States, or Canada, they will not recognize this, and you're going to have to take additional tests that prove that you understand English. So that could be TOEFL, that could be SAT, blah, blah, blah. But if you took English A, then you won't have to take the TOEFL and stuff. So history is a really heavy content subject. I didn't take it, but I'm going to put it at requires a lot of studying because for history, obviously, you need to memorize the dates the case studies and everything. So I'm going to put out lots of studying as well. Next up, we have Mandarin B. Okay, so for me, Mandarin B wasn't really guaranteed. You have to memorize a lot of idioms, cheng yu, and a lot of ci yu as well. If Mandarin was not your first language, it's going to be a little difficult because you do need to do a lot of reading comprehension and a lot of writing. So for me, I had drilled my ass off for those two months writing Chinese in order to get that seven. And even after doing the exam, I was not really sure that I would get a seven for Mandarin B. But at the same time, if you know, Chinese was your, you know, first language. If you use Chinese all the time, if you write all the time back in, you know, preschool and stuff, then Chinese is going to be really easy. So it's actually really dependent on yourself. If you really get a Chinese, then it can be seven to without studying. But if, you know, Chinese is need to, it can be need high level tutoring. So because of that, I'm going to put it at heavy content, easy sevens, because you don't need to study as much as econ and geo. Econ and geo, I needed to study for three months straight every single day. For Chinese, I did it for two months, every two to three days for Chinese. So I'm going to put it at easy sevens over there. Next up, we have um, IB music. Okay. So I'm going to put it, at, yeah, I'm going to put it at sevens with a bit of studying because I think it's an art. So there's no exam. So it's not as tough as the other subjects, but I think you need to do projects you may need to compose. You do need to be literate in, in music and notes. So I'm going to put a bit of sight. Next up, we have IB Design Tech. So this is, I'd say it's sevens without studying. The reason I say it's sevens without studying is because I saw the past papers and the questions they asked was like, is the shape of this chair ergonomic? Will this be comfortable? It seems like a really easy subject. It doesn't seem like there's a lot of heavy content. So you can basically just bullshit your way through DT. So it's like saying, is the shape of this container for the slime the best shape that I can do? Or is a rectangle better? Or is a star shape better? Basically bullshit your way through design technology. So I'm gonna put it at sevens without studying. In terms of usefulness, it is not as useful as from orange dark orange above but you know if you're going into design then i'd say you, you should take it as well next up we have lang and lit english okay so i'm gonna put it at you know red need high level tutoring okay no matter if it's sl or hl the reason i say this is because most students for the two years of the ib are capped at a certain grade so if they get fives they're capped at fives they cannot touch a six if they get six, they're capped at six and they can't even touch a seven. The reason that's the case is because most students don't actually know how to write a good essay because the teachers for most schools, their teachers don't actually give them good feedback on how to actually write better essays. So unlike math, where it's either right or wrong and you can improve by doing more past papers for English. If no matter how many past papers you do from zero to hundred, your writing will still stay the same. If your teacher is not breaking down your essay, literally word for word and telling you exactly how you can get a seven. Most teachers just give five bubble points of annotations as feedback, which is not enough. You need literally paragraphs of feedback telling you how you can improve. And the reason why I put high level tutoring, it's because even if you have a tutor, most students in my school had tutors, but they were still stuck at a five, still stuck at a six. Most tutors didn't take 
the IB themselves. So they have no idea what the IB examiners are actually looking for. So by high level tutoring, I mean you need an actual student who has taken the IB and gotten a seven in Lang and Lit, who knows exactly what the examiners are looking for on the essays and will teach you exactly how to write perfect essays. So for me, all my students have been getting sevens in their English Lang and Lit for predicted grades as well as their final IB exam grades. And most of them came in at fours and fives. And I was able to get them to sevens simply because I know what examiners are looking for. And I give them detailed feedback on how to improve on their essay writing. Now, if you're interested in private tutoring where I can help break down your analysis while you write it and tell you how you can improve, then contact me on my Instagram. If not, no worries. Either way, I just want to help you succeed in doing this. For any subject on this tier list, you're able to get a seven with help. So even if it's in red, even if it's in yellow, with the right amount of help, with the right techniques, you will get a seven for these subjects. So there's nothing to fear. Level A, of course, it is very useful because if you're coming from a foreign country like me from, uh, from China, Hong Kong, going to Canada, I didn't need to take TOEFL because I had level A. So the school knows I speak English, so I didn't really need to do any additional programs or anything. And the skills I learned to get a seven in Lang Lit allowed me to easily get B pluses and A's in university without studying for essay writing subjects because I have a really good essay writing background. So next up, we have ESS. So ESS, I would have to say, is sevens with a bit. Actually, it's heavy content with easy sevens. Okay, it is not a respected subject. It is kind of like sports science. Most students see it as a subject where, again, stupid students take. So if they don't want to take the actual sciences, CS, physics, chem, or bio, they would take ESS. It's a subject where you can easily just bullshit your way through, you know, and just talk about animals and the environment. It is an easy subject, but there is still a lot of content to memorize because when you're talking about the environment, you still need to know about the environment, but it is easy sevens. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Next up, we have mathematics. Now I need to separate math SL and HL. Math SL is actually really easy. And I'd put it at heavy content, but easy sevens with a lot of training. If you do a lot of past papers, you're guaranteed to get a seven for math AASL because there's not as much content as HL and it is not as unpredictable. However, if you're in HL, then I'm going to have to put it at need talent because for HL, even if you do a lot of studying, you're not guaranteed a seven. So I can't put it at orange. You need to write a really good IA, get a really high score to you know support your paper one, two, and three mark. You have to get a sevens in paper one and two, okay? Because paper three is unpredictable. You may only get you know four or five in, in paper three if you're unlucky. If you're lucky, you'll get six or seven. But if you're unlucky, you'll get a four or five. The reason is because you can't really train for the paper three. And for the paper one and two, the last few questions are horrendous. It's extremely long, it's really hard, and you need a lot of practice, skill, and luck in order to get there. However, it being that hard, is also worth it because a lot of universities respect math AAHL. If you're trying to get into econ, if you're trying to get into CS, if you're trying to get into engineering, if you're trying to get into math, a lot of universities will require you to get a at least a six in math AAHL. So if you're an SL, the university, depending on your program, will not even look at your resume because they require HL. So it is a really top tier subject, but it is also really difficult. All right, so this is AI. Okay, I meant AA. Okay. So for AI, I was looking at a students that took AI and it is the artistic students. So it's the students that usually take visual arts, you know, theater that takes AI. So I can't really put it on the same level as AA. So I'm going to put it at sevens with a bit of study. It is not a respected subject. A lot of students don't respect it because only stu stupid students take AI. Next up, we have um, Abby Film. So I would put it at also sevens with a bit of study. Okay. It is just project based. There's no exam. And so long as you're doing what the teacher tells you to do, you will get a seven. So that's for any art subject, even theater. So theater, I'm going to put it at seven with a bit of studying. You do need to do what the teacher tells you to do. That's the, so that's the ranking. Okay. We have English Lang Lit and Lit at needing high level tutoring. If you don't have a high level tutor who has taken the IB and gotten sevens in that subject, you're not going to get a seven because you have no idea what a level seven essay looks like and how to write a level seven essay. No matter if you do 2000 past papers, your essay writing will still remain the same. That's why it's so difficult. You need constant feedback on every essay. Now, next tier, need talent tier. I would have to say math, a H L C S S L H L physics, chem, bio, S L H L need talent. No matter if you study a lot, no matter if you do a lot of past papers, no matter if you memorize a lot, you still need a bit of skill in order to get a seven in those subjects. Mix up heavy content subjects, but it's still easy sevens, but you need to study a lot. This is global politics. I'm going to put econ above this because there is diagrams and calculations. Econ, 
geography and history. Next up, it is heavy content, but easy sevens. So you don't need to study as much as econ, GP, geo, history, but it is still heavy content, stuff to memorize. So that's ESS and Mandarin B. Next up, it is the you know sevens with a bit of studying or maybe even no studying at all because these are arts, right? So that's IB film. I'm gonna put math AI at the top because it's still math. Math AI, IB music. Okay, actually I'm gonna have to put math. I, I can't put math below that. I'm gonna put math at heavy content. Then we have sports, science, BM, and theater. Okay. And then lastly, you have seven to science. So subjects where you can just bullshit your way through and not even, you know, memorize or anything. So that's IBDT and English B. That's the end of the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you like the video, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you guys need any IB mentorship for any subject, then make sure you guys check out IB45 Accelerator in the link down below. And if you guys have any questions regarding tutoring or IB45 Accelerator, make sure you guys DM me on my Instagram, Melvin underscore phone. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.